Let us move on to our new topic and the uh, final topic of the day which is um, minimum potential energy. So what we have done in the morning is we had discussed the principle of virtual work. Now virtual work also is an energy method. When we, when we say energy method what it means is that we do not deal with simply the force but we deal with work of the force. Okay? Now what we had seen earlier that suppose we take this, ma we take this particle and take it along this trajectory from O up to A2. Now what we know is that when we take this particle in an infinitesimal, a very small displacement ds, then the work done okay, at that position will simply be given by f, f dot dr which is f ds cos alpha. We, we had seen that in the morning. But now if I want to find out that what is the total work that is done on this particle to move it from O up to A2, then what we have to do? is we have to do the integral of this quantity f cos alpha dx. Okay? This f may or may not depend on ds, so that is why it is in the integral and you do this full quantity and what we say is that similarly for a couple okay, du is equal to m d theta. So if you up, uh, take a particle from state 1 to state 2, then the total work done will be m times theta 2 minus theta 1. So now in, in the morning session we were talking about infinite simple work. And when I say infinitesimal work, it just means that you give a small displacement, what is the work done? And now what we are talking about is you take this particle along a path or you give a body a finite rotation and you are asked that if you are giving a body a finite rotation with a torque or moment m, what is the total work that is done on the body? Similarly, if you take a body or take a particle, uh, move it from point 0.1 to point 0.2 okay, by applying a force f, so what is the effective work done? So this is the effective work done okay? and this is the effective work done for moment, this is effective work done for force. Okay? Now to take simple examples, okay? these are elementary examples which we know from our high school. Suppose we have a trajectory where we take this mass and we take it from point 1 up to point 2. Okay? What we know is that, that we are doing some work against gravity. So gravity on this particle acts downwards. If I take the particle along this trajectory, okay, then from here to here, okay, a small motion of delta y, what we will do? We will do a work okay, of minus dy. What is this minus dy? Minus w dy is the work done by gravity because gravity is acting downwards. This, uh, this particle is moved upwards. The work done will be minus w dy and this point that I want to emphasize that this is the work done by the gravity, okay, minus w dy. So what you say is that, that if I take this particle from 1 to 2, what is the total work done by gravity in this overall moment? And the total work done will be simply this integral of w dy, w is constant for the body and the total work done will be minus w delta y, where delta y is simply y2 minus y1. So what this means is that to take this body from 1 to 2, Gravity does a work of minus w dy for obvious reason that gravity acts downward, the particle has gone upward. So gravity did a work which was negative. Let us look at the second example. Okay? So you have a particle or a body which is attached to a spring which is in this undeformed configuration. The stiffness of the spring is k. Now if you displace this spring okay, by some distance x, okay, the force acting in this spring okay, will be kx. Which, which will act in this direction. So the question we ask is that, that what is the work that this spring does if you pull it from this point, okay, which is coordinate, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is x1 up to this stretched point which has a coordinate of x2. Now what we realize in this case is that unlike in gravity where the force was always constant, in this case the resisting force F which is coming from the spring is not always constant but is proportional to the stretching which is kx and the work done will be kx times dx minus sin y because dx is in the direction opposite to the force exerted by the spring. So what is happening here is that, that the internal spring okay, is causing a resistance to the outward motion and in turn is causing a, uh, uh, is doing a work given by minus kx dx 
if you want to find out what is the total work done by the spring, if you stretch this spring from x1 to x2, you just do this integral and what you will see is that, that the total work done by spring is kx1 square minus kx2 square divided by 2. So, you have this factor of half coming into picture and this is x1 square, x2 square, okay, simple example. Now, what we do is that what we saw uh, in the last slide or in the last couple of slides, okay, is what is the work done by a force. We saw that we take a body, we move it from below, we take it upwards. What is the work done by the gravity? In the spring, we take a spring, spring at rest, keep stretching it. What is the work done by the spring in the stretch from x1 to x2? We saw that it is equal to half kx1 square minus half kx2 square, okay. So, there is a minus here because the work was done, okay, against the direction in which the force either from the gravity or from the spring was acting. Now, we define this quantity which we call as a potential energy of the body with respect to any force. So, we say that the work done from taking, uh, from taking the particle from 1 to 2, we define it is given by the potential energy of the particle at point 1 minus the potential energy of the particle at point 2, okay. So, what do we get here is that, that since u12 is negative, you will see that this quantity potential energy at 1 of the particle will be less than the potential energy of the particle at point 2. So, what we will see is that, that to take this particle from 1 to 2, the work done against gravity was equal to minus w into delta y, but by definition we are saying that by doing this work, there is certain amount of potential energy stored in the particle, which is negative of the work that was done by gravity on the particle, which is simply equal to in this case W times delta y. So, if you take the particle, take it down and move up, the potential energy now that is stored in the particle with respect to this datum, okay, with this point is simply W delta y. Now, somebody will ask, okay, that W delta y is the potential energy stored in the particle, why are we taking that to be equal to positive? Why this convention? that the work was coming to be negative, why are we saying that we lift the particle up, its potential energy increases. This is from the simple observation, okay, that from the conservation of energy, we see that if you take the particle up and drop it, it will come down and gain some kinetic energy at the bottom from where we had left. So, what does that mean? That by taking the particle up, the body had capacity to do some extra work or it has the capacity to generate energy and that energy now from potential it gets converted to kinetic energy. So, we do work which is negative against the gravity, but that gets stored or that is reflected as the potential energy of the particle. Similarly, the potential energy stored in the spring will be exactly opposite, okay. The work done will be equal to half kx1 square minus half kx2 square and the potential energy that is stored in the spring will simply be equal to half kx square with respect to certain datum, okay. We will come to this point a little bit later, okay. So, what we again uh, define here is that, that when differential work against a force, for example, either gravity or spring was done, the work done, okay, is equal to minus the potential energy stored. Even for a spring, for example, we keep on pulling on a spring, okay, there is a body that is tied at the end, okay, spring is doing negative work, but that negative work done by the spring is being stored as the positive potential energy of the spring. So, when we release the mass, we see that there is a rebound. What is that rebound? It is the potential energy stored in that spring that is now acting on the body and it is converting it into, it into kinetic energy, okay. So, is the convention that what is the work done by force and what is the corresponding potential energy, is that point clear? Fine, okay, that is a clear point. Uh, so, what we do is that, that the convention is that, that a work done on a body is negative of change in the potential energy of the body. Now, the point is this, it is very important to choose an appropriate datum and we always refer to the potential energy consistently with respect to that datum. For example, if I want to find out what is the potential energy of the particle at this point, now it depends that what is our datum. If I say that this is my datum, that this is my reference level, then by degree you say that the potential energy is 0 because you can define whatever potential energy you want to. So, we say that potential energy is 0 here and with respect to this, the potential energy at point 2 will be equal to simply W times Y2. With respect to this datum, the potential energy of the particle at this position is simply equal to W times Y1. If we decide that I want to take the datum or the reference level at this point, then we know that with respect to this reference, the potential energy at this point is 0 and with respect to this level, 
the potential energy at this point is simply W times delta Y. Okay? This point will become more clear as we proceed further and solve a few problems. Okay? And these kind of forces, okay, it will become very clear. For example, if you teach, uh, if you teach structural dynamics uh, later on or teach uh, 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 some courses in uh, solid mechanics where we have to discuss about energy, the forces for which work can be calculated from a change in potential energy are called as conservative forces. For example, damping and friction are non-conservative forces because they cannot define a potential okay, with respect to which you say that the, uh, that, the, uh, that the force can be obtained or uh, 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 but whenever we can define okay, uh, a force in terms of gradient of some kind of potential energy, we say that those forces are conservative and we don't need to go into details. If you are interested, you can ask me afterwards. But just uh, for clarity, I'm just uh, for completeness, I'm emphasizing this point here. Okay? A simple illustration now. Okay? A, a illustration is this, that suppose we have a spring which is at rest here that a spring when it is unstretched is at this location. To the end of the spring, we put a mass. And what we are asking is that what is the total potential energy of this system is a simple question we ask. Now, this coordinate x, okay, what will happen here is that, that when you apply some, put some mass here, initially the spring was rest at this level. Let us say that this was our datum level. That at this datum, the potential energy of this entire system was zero. Now, when you apply a mass and the mass gets lowered by a distance of x, there is a stretch of x in the spring. So, the potential energy in the spring now is half kx square. But what is the potential energy of the, energies of the mass? We saw a couple of slides ago that the, with respect to this datum, the potential energy is positive wy. But here, with respect to this datum, you are actually going down. So, the potential energy will be minus mg into x. You see that point? Okay. Why? Because if you go from here to here, work done by gravity will be positive equal to mgx. So, the potential will be minus mgx. So, the total potential energy of this system is half kx square minus mgx. Now, you are asking me, okay, we got this potential energy. Okay. So, clap, clap. Now, what? Okay. The idea is that this is a very simple problem, but we can write down that as a function of coordinate x. How is x defined? Rest position any distance x below that is the way we have defined a coordinate x. So, this is the overall potential energy. Now, can you tell me how can we put that to any reasonable use? Now, that x can even become positive if desired, but okay, we got this potential energy. Now, can you find any good use for this potential energy? Can we learn something by knowing that this is the potential energy of the system? Now, in this case, for example, there is no question about any force. Force is gravity. It is getting stored in the potential, uh, it is getting stored in the spring. So, gravity is doing some work, getting stored as a potential energy of the spring. But the point is that, can we know something about when the system will be in equilibrium from knowing this energy? Minimum potential energy. So, the way we use this, okay, and it can be shown, okay, there is a detailed derivation in Beer and Johnston, Murray and Crabbe, if you want to have a look at it, you can have a look, but it can be shown that if you can write down the potential energy of a system in terms of some displacement parameter, in this case, which is x, then the x where the potential energy is minimum or let me put it this way where the potential energy is extremum. What is extremum in calculus language is if you draw the potential energy as a function of x as we have drawn there, then the slope of that curve wherever it becomes 0 is called as an extremum. Special condition is, uh, is a minima and you will see that in this problem, this blue curve is the spring energy, this magenta curve is the potential energy minus mgx coming from the gravity and a combination of this will give you a curve which looks like this and this point where the slope of this effective energy curve is 0, it is at that point where you will see that the body will come to equilibrium. Now, how do we get that point? If we take du by dx equal to 0, what do we get? kx minus mg equal to 0, so x equal to mg by k. You said good, that is what we expect from Newton's law that mg is the weight that should balance the force coming from the spring kx equal to mg. So, but why this simple example, what we could see is that Newton's law, okay, which says that all the forces should be balanced for a particle, okay, is perfectly valid for this conservative system where we can define some kind of potential energy. There is no dissipation in the system and you say that the minima or the extreme of this potential energy is the point where the system will come to some kind of equilibrium. 
Okay, so this in short is a principle of minimum potential energy that if you can write down the overall potential energy of the system in terms of any of its kinematic coordinates, be it rotation, be it displacement, be it a combination of these and if we can extremize the energy with respect to those coordinates, then the solving those resulting equation of uh, resulting equations of equilibrium, whatever values we get are the positions or the coordinates where your system will be in some kind of equilibrium. Now you will ask me, okay, system is in some kind of equilibrium, okay, good, but what is the benefit? We did virtual work principle, we did uh, simple Newton's laws or moment balance, fo moment balance, force balance, what is the big deal about this? What you will see is that, that there are certain category of problems and there is one problem which I will like really demonstrate that with, in which cases principle of potential energy is extremely useful, okay, that it is very, very difficult in many complicated problems to write down the, uh, to write down all the free body diagrams, especially if all these problems are like, for example, there are many springs involved, okay, where there can be huge amount of deformations in the system till it reaches some equilibrium configurations. So especially in those problems and many of those problems we are going to solve, this principle of minimum potential energy becomes very good. Second type of problems where it becomes very good is I had just discussed a few moments ago that we just need to make that du by dx or du by d theta, whatever the kinematic coordinate is, should be equal to zero. But it is only an extrema, okay, Newton's law will only give you by, where du by dx equal to zero, which means for example, wherever the, uh, the overall force acting on the system or overall torque acting on any free body diagrams or part or the full free body diagram is zero. But what it does not tell you that if you displace the system from that position, a tiny perturbation, then will the system remain stable or not stable? And that kind of considerations can be easily be done by using potential energy approach that where we can also say that not only if the system is in equilibrium, but also we can say if that equilibrium is indeed a stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium or a neutral equilibrium. So that is the reason why it is really good to use, uh, to learn minimum potential energy approach. Another point is for example, in the morning I had said that there are many advanced techniques in, in solid mechanics, uh, in, uh, in uh, structural mechanics, in finite element method or approximate methods where Newton's law, using Newton's law does not really help us. Okay, we need to resort to some kind of energy principles in order to obtain say forces or moments in statically indeterminate systems or if you want to solve a problem approximately, get an approximate solution of a problem, then Newton's law do not help you but minimum potential energy principle as well as virtual work principle, okay, we can use them to our advantage in order to get approximate solutions of various problems. Okay, those are topics of uh, uh, those are advanced topics, okay, which uh, uh, which is not the uh, not the subject of this course. Okay, so far so good. That this is the minimum potential energy. So wherever you can write down u in terms of some kinematic coordinate, okay. Now this kinematic coordinate need not be a small coordinate. This x need not be small. X can be finite. Okay, x can be finite, and then we can write down that what is the overall potential of the system. The minima, not minima, the extremum of this, where du by dx becomes zero is the point of equilibrium. That is the principle of minimum potential energy. Now let us do this simple example, okay. What we have here is this, that for this structure, what we know is that the unstretched length of the spring is dA, which means, uh, what is this system? This, this uh, spring is fixed here, is attached to the roller at point B. This, uh, there is a hinge here to which you have two rods, okay, pinned at A, pinned at C and then correspondingly this two rod meet at C and what we are asked in this problem is if we tie a weight W at point C then what will be the resulting configuration okay or what will be the resulting angle if we define this angle as theta then what is the resulting angle theta at equilibrium is what we are asked to solve in this problem. The simplest thing to do is let us write down the potential energy for this system. What we know is that that when theta is equal to 0 rod AC will be vertical, rod BC will be vertical, this length will be 0. So that is when the spring is unstretched. So what does that mean? That this length AB is nothing but the stretch X in the spring. So the potential energy of the spring is nothing but half K into AB square. But what we know is that AB is nothing but 2 L sin theta. This is one part is L sin theta, other part is L sin theta, so it is 2 L sin theta. Further. What we realize is this, that uh, if we say that uh, from with respect to point A, what is the vertical coordinate of W? 
what is that equal to? It will be equal to L cos theta minus the length of the string. L cos theta will be the coordinate of point C, vertical coordinate of point C. So with respect to this datum, L cos theta is the vertical coordinate of point C minus the length of the spring, uh, this, this string, not spring, string is W. But that string is a constant length. When we differentiate, it will not matter. So we say that that constant we left out. So essentially we are saying that V is equal to half K 2L sin theta square plus WL cos theta. So far so good. So we could write down in the previous problem which we had shown, the kinematic coordinate was X. In this case it is theta which is the kinematic coordinate. And what we want to know is at what theta or at what thetas will the system be in equilibrium. You can solve this problem using Newton's law. It will be more painful. This will be much easier. You try it using uh, moment balance, force balance. Not extremely painful, but somewhat. But this is much more transparent in this case. Now you tell me, is this, is this point clear so far? Yes? Somebody has a question? Yes, please, please. Then w L cos theta, I think this is not right. Why it is not right? Can you tell me? Mm, the displacement is L cos theta. Huh? L cos theta will be displacement. What is L cos theta? You tell me. W if if yeah. you take this bottom line as the datum, as your datum plane. Yes, sir. Okay. With respect to that, what is the height of W? Look at that. If you replace that, that, that W ka, what is the height with respect to the base plane? This is. Uh, you tell me. It will be W cos theta minus the length of that string. Yes, sir, minus the length of the so string. So, the length of the string is a constant. I can put that length, but ultimately, when I differentiate with respect to theta, that length will go away. This will go out in del u. Yes. It, it will be there in W L cos theta minus length of okay, the string. Okay, but then let me do this thing. Whatever length of the string is, I will say that I will take a datum L below. Yes, sir. So, then it, it will also go away. Because you have the full freedom to choose what is the base with respect to which you can define your potential energy. Okay, so you just take that datum L below. So that minus L plus L now, because your already energy is L plus W L cos theta minus the top L, then it is just this. So potential energy, there is no absolute value. That's what I'm saying. There will be always some constant which will depend on where your datum or the base plane is. Is the point clear? Okay. Is, are there any other question? Okay, it was a very valid point. But note that there is no absolute value of potential energy. There will always be some constant which will depend on where you take your datum. Yes, please. Uh, sir, it is, uh, uh, let us assume it is initially at C. What? There is no string. There is no? String. Okay, just the weight is let kept it be, at C. Let it be at C. Yes. Uh, initially, it will be when the theta is zero, it, it will be at the height L. Yes. And uh, when the, it is stressed, huh. it will be at height It will L go a little bit below. So if you want to then. So, then. Uh, so change in height will be L minus L cos theta, no, sir? Let's do it. Okay, let's do it now. Let us take, what you are saying is that I will keep datum on the top is what you are saying that you take top as the reference level yes but now the body is going down okay with respect to top it is going down so the potential energy will be minus mg hmm. l times 1 minus cos theta yes so that there will be a constant of minus mgl but but minus mgl into minus cos theta is again plus mgl cos theta so you will get this plus another negative constant but that negative constant is just because of the fact that you are kept datum upwards. Okay, so it doesn't matter. So you can choose one datum and be consistent. Whatever you do, you will only thing that you will get is an additional constant here, which is of no consequence because ultimately your potential is shift up or down. That doesn't change the feature. Is it clear point? So you can do that also, you will get the same answer. Any other question? Yeah? Okay, so let's move on. Then what do we know? That this is the overall potential energy of the system, which is a combination of VE, or the E is the elastic potential energy, and VG, which is the gravitational potential energy. And now to find out which is the extrema, okay, let us not say minima, let us say it's an extrema. We say dV by d theta equal to zero, you will get an equation of this form. Now clearly what do we know? One solution will be theta equal to zero, okay? Now, is theta equal to zero, does it make sense from our, uh, from our Newtonian thinking or from our force or moment balance thinking? Theta equal to zero means both of them are perfectly vertical. Does that make intuitive sense to us? Yes or no? Yes, because everything is vertical, no force in the spring. It's like you keep, it, it is like keeping 
something hinged about it, okay, a, a rod hinged about a bottom point, and we are just like having a weight which is passing through the bottom point. Okay, so no force, no torque, you draw any free body diagram, you will see that the system is fine, it's in equilibrium. Okay, so theta is equal to zero actually makes sense to us. Only thing what we'll realize is that, that that is not a stable equilibrium. Okay, what we will realize when we go for stability analysis. Now second solution will be when 4KL cos theta minus W is equal to zero. Now that solution will give you what? Cos theta is equal to W by 4KL and you know that W by 4KL only if that quantity is less than or equal to one will there be a second solution or else there is no second solution to this problem. Point clear? Okay, because if you have uh, W by 4 KL, K is extremely small, okay, or L is extremely small, okay, then this quantity can become more than one. There is no second solution. The only possible solution, equilibrium, is the vertical solution where theta is equal to zero. And you saw, you try doing this problem with simple uh, Newton's method. It's not impossible, but it will not come out to be as clean as we have shown here. Any doubt about this, this entire procedure? If you can just explain this expression, V, just, just with the signs, please. This? Yeah. Last, last line, previous line, previous line, previous line to that, yeah. This one? Yes, yes, please. Huh. Yes. Okay, so half K. Oh, this, this is positive, that, that I am not getting really. Is this positive? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This potential at W is weight. What we have done is this, that we have taken datum at the bottom. If you take datum at the bottom, then think about it. If you take a mass from below, take it up to distance yc, what is the work done by gravity? Minus, minus wyc and so the potential energy as we had discussed is negative of the potential energy that is why the plus. So if you are in doubt, what you do is that forget about everything else, just that force or that mass. You say ki if I take some particle where the force is acting, go all the way up to yc, what is the work done? That work done ka minus is what you add there. All right. Okay. All right. So if you have any doubt, like for example, if it is a force rather than having a weight, if it were a force, you say that if this force were here and I take that part, if there is some particle along with the force, you just take it upwards, work done is how much? Minus that force into distance. So the potential energy is plus F into that distance with respect to that datum. If I have it here, the datum is at the top, okay, what happens? You take this, work is done with respect to this. So plus W into that distance. So potential will have minus W into that distance. And you will see that no matter what datum you take, if you follow this convention properly, you will get the same V up to a constant. Okay, is this point clear? Any questions, any doubts? Okay, these are very important points that for example, because sign convention, the only simple rule is that forget about anything else when you want to write down the potential energy of a force. Just take that go wherever you want to, find out work done, potential is minus of that, simple. Now let us discuss that the stability, the concept which we do not discuss strictly in all this uh, two uh, uh, equilibrium, uh, in 2D equilibrium or even in virtual work, we do not do any discussion about stability of equilibrium. But what we say, see now is this, let us look at this very, very simple example. Let us take an inverted rod which is pinned at A. It is a one degree of freedom system that if we rotate the rod by theta, the entire position of the rod is automatically known. So it is a one degree of freedom problem. Now what we say is that if there is gravity acting downwards, if you plot what is the energy of the body of, of this rod as a function of theta, you will see that at this position, when theta equal to zero, the energy is a minima. What is this absolute value will depend on what is the datum that you are using. Okay, that absolute value depends on like if your datum is this or this or somewhere in middle. But what you will see is that, that the minima will come at theta equal to zero and the energy always increase. Now think about it. If for example, we have an inverted cup like this, we keep a tiny marble somewhere. What will it do? It will try to go and settle at the bottom. Okay, so what it says is that, that wherever there is an energy minima, the system that, that, that marble or a, uh, or a small particle is that degree of freedom, it will try and go and settle at the bottom. Forget about the oscillations, okay, we do not worry about the oscillation, but it will try to settle at the bottom. Now the question is this, suppose you have a particle settled at the bottom, you want to know that it is in equilibrium. Why do you know it is in equilibrium? First of all, the energy, the so slope is 0 for the energy, 
even thinking from Newtonian point of view, just look here, that the force acting is gravity, okay, which is passing through the hinge. So, this entire assembly, this, this rod is in equilibrium at theta equal to 0. But we want to know that if that equilibrium is a stable equilibrium or if it is an unstable equilibrium. Now, how do you know that? We perturb. Suppose, for example, we have a minima like this. We have a, uh, a small marble stuck at the bottom. We perturb. What happens if it is a minima like this? The marble will try to come back again. Right? It will try to come back again. So, whenever a system, when perturbed from its equilibrium position, tries to get back to that position, we say that that position is a stable equilibrium. Okay? It is a stable equilibrium. And what is the mathematical definition for this? The mathematical definition is that, that if this is the potential energy V, this is theta, then what does that mean? That if you look here, slope is negative, slowly becoming positive, 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 increasing. What does that mean? That a slope is increasing. And slope is increasing means that d times d, uh, d by d theta of the slope should be greater than 0, which in other words says that d2 v by d theta square, which is the curvature, should be positive. So, curvature at that point being positive, okay, is a sign that it is a stable equilibrium for small perturbation, the equilibrium position. Is that point clear? That when the curvature at that point for small perturbations is positive, then that equilibrium position is a stable equilibrium position. Straightforward. Any question, any doubt about that? Sir? Yes, please. Oh, 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 it should be negative. Sorry, sorry, please, pardon me. This should be negative. Okay, my error. Yeah, yes. Small perturbation means what? I will come to that. Okay, I will come to that. Small, large is again relative. I will come to that. Okay, in the next slide, I will come to that. It is a very good point. Asking because uh, during equilibrium, we are telling the differential change will not change the energy. Not change the energy, but, but what is happening? But to the so now now we have to think about it. To the first order, to the first order, to the first order means what? If you if you have done Taylor series expansion, what you will see is that that expansion of a function about some point will be equal to v naught plus dv by dx dx plus half d two v by dx square. The energy uh, minima just tells you that to the first order dv by dx equal to zero means the energy is stationary or energy does not change to the first order. But this what it is telling you is that to the second order, the energy is actually increasing if you perturb. So, that is the order. Means for example, if you do a Taylor series expansion for V, then you will see that if, let, let, think about it like this, that locally it looks flat. But there is an additional correction which is given by this. So, the first correction is dV by d theta equal to 0. The second correction is that this is dV by d theta square into delta theta square. Physically, a small change, what it means is this. Okay, uh, let me do it this way. Uh, if you remember, okay, let us do this thing here. If you recall what we had done in the morning, okay, that this is the rod AB. Suppose we give a small rotation to this rod, what happens is this a small rotation which is given by delta theta. What we know is that the horizontal displacement okay, is how much? Really speaking, if this length is L, then really speaking delta H is equal to L sin theta, okay, sin delta theta. Do you agree with me? That is really the true answer, true expression. But what we say is that, that if delta theta is small, what is sin theta? Approximately theta. So, we say that this is equal to approximately sin delta theta and when delta, sorry, approximately equal to L delta theta and when delta theta becomes smaller and smaller, this becomes more and more accurate. Now, what is the vertical displacement of this point? It is equal to L 1 minus cos theta or cos of delta theta. You agree with me? If I do it, uh, if I rewrite this expression, what does this become? 2L sin square delta theta by 2. Now, what when sin delta theta is small, can't I rewrite it approximately as L by 2 delta theta square? Okay? Now, note one thing. So, what we are saying is that, that delta H 
to the leading order is L delta theta and delta y to the leading order is L delta theta square. But what we say is that, that because delta theta is small, I can say that this quantity is much larger compared to this quantity because when delta theta is small, delta theta square become even smaller. So we say that to the first order, the only dominant displacement to the first order, why first order? Because delta theta to the power 1, so that is first order. So to the first order we say that my displacement is only horizontal and then we say that to the second order the displacement of the vertical point is delta theta square. There are further quantity because cos theta, sin square delta theta is not just equal to delta theta square by 4. There are many other quantities in terms of delta. If you do the Taylor series expansion you will see. But to the leading order okay, which is 2, I say that this is my displacement. Now similarly, if for example, you have a potential energy okay, where the minima is happening at x0. So what you say is that, that if I give a tiny perturbation of delta x, then this can be written as v at x0 plus dv by dx at x0 into delta x plus half d to v by dx square delta x square plus terms which are delta x cube, delta x4 and so on. What we know that at equilibrium this quantity becomes 0. So to the first order we say that the system potential energy is stationary. But to the second order there is an extra correction and what this quantity is telling you that if you perturb about this, if this quantity is positive then your energy is actually going to increase in a second order sense. Okay, so think about it. Okay, so this is mathematical. So that's what it means. So it means that to the leading order and the geometrical meaning is like this. That to the linear order, the energy is stationary to the second order. Okay, is when you want to do the energy expansion. I will, you will see that when, so to the leading, uh, to the first order, energy is stationary. But when you go to higher order, you will see that it is a curvature that will decide that is the energy increasing or not increasing. So d to v by d theta square greater than 0 means that a tiny perturbation is going to increase the energy which means that it will want to come back. So it is stable equilibrium and the second quantity, okay I made a mistake here, it should be d to v by d theta square less than 0 which means that the shape of the minima or the extrema looks like this. That a tiny perturbation from this will actually reduce your energy. So there is no incentive for the, for the system to come back here. It will want to reduce its energy further and it will just roll down here. So for example, if you take an in system like this, you put a particle, it may precariously be placed here, but the moment you perturb, it will just roll down. Why? Because the energy is decreasing further and that's what the particle want to do. It's fine. And the last case here, and that's the case uh, which is shown here, is the case of an inverted pendulum. You see that, for example, if you want to balance a pen like this, okay. So it is so much more difficult. Why? Because even though if I exactly balance the pen, okay, the line of action and the reaction will exactly pass through each other and it is an equilibrium position. A tiny perturbation will just make it fall down. Okay, this is exactly, exactly what is happening here. That any tiny perturbation will let the system go away from equilibrium so it will not come back to that position. And ultimately neutral equilibrium is this position. That if you pin it at the center, then the energy just does not change. No matter what theta you put, energy is constant and in that case you say that no matter where you move, the system does not have a particular preference. So is this, uh, is this uh, classification overall clear to you? You are, uh, you are okay with this? Any questions, any queries? Fine. Now let me give you a typical, for uh, any complex system, okay, a typical energy landscape may look like this. So what you can have, you have a saddle point. What is a saddle point? Saddle point is a point where d to v by d theta square or is an inflection point saddle is strictly speaking in uh, two dimensions that at this point the second derivative of v or u the energy with respect to theta will be equal to 0. It is a minima here. What is a minima? It is a stable point where the curvature or d to v by d to u by d theta square is positive. You can have a maxima, you can have a minima. And when I said small perturbations, the reason is that suppose your particle is in minima. If I give it a tiny perturbation here, it will roll back. But if I give it a huge perturbation, then it will just jump over the maxima and go here. Okay? And this is a very important problem in so-called optimization 
where the system can get trapped into local minima, where you actually want to get a global minima. Okay, is this point fair? Last slide. Huh. Last part. The the neutral equilibrium. Just think about it. In this problem, suppose the rod is uniform, the center of gravity is at the center. Okay. Now, if you pin the rod at the center, just think about it. You perturb it anywhere the center of gravity does not go anywhere, does not change, it is not a function of theta. Then as far as that parameter theta is concerned, the energy is independent of theta, which means that any position you put, the system has no preference one way or the other. In Newtonian language, if you take the free body diagram of this, no matter what orientation you give, system has no preference to change. Okay, That is what it means. And it also means that everything is flat, the energy landscape is completely flat and what it will also mean in some very crude terms that if this inflection point is reasonably wide, then it is another way of saying that the inflection point is a point of neutral equilibrium. Here, actually I should not use the word saddle point, I should use point of inflection, saddle point truly is for two dimensions. Okay? So this point is where your second derivative of energy with respect to theta is actually 0. And what happens is that, think about it like this, in neutral equilibrium, all derivatives of energy with respect to theta are 0, all. So, you can say that if more and more derivatives with respect to theta are 0, you say that the landscape is flatter and flatter there and then you can say that the, the, the saddle point or the inflection point can be taken to be a neutral equilibrium point if it is a reasonably flat area. Okay? But this is not a hard and fast rule, there are some many complications, let us not go into those details. But saddle point is a point where locally it is flat. So, one side there is a maxima, if you see here, if I perturb it on one side, the energy will increase. So, the particle would want to come here, but I perturb it on the other side, it will just roll down. Whereas, in a minima, you perturb it either here or there, the particle would still want to come back and in a maxima, you perturb it either way, the particle still want to go out. The difference between these, this and this is that here, one way it is stable, other way it is not stable. Okay, we will do a few problems and then these things will become more clear. In 2D, for example, we do not need to go into this it will look like this. So, let us look at a sample problem. So, what we have here okay, is a big, a big uh, pulley, uh, a, a big wheel okay, which for example, there has a small inner wheel which is rigidly attached. Okay, so, this is not a 2 degree of freedom system. There is a small wheel, a small pulley which is rigidly attached okay, to this big wheel and the entire assembly is pinned about this point O. Okay? So, this can rotate like this about point O. Now, on the top of this, okay, there is a mass A, weight of which is given, the radius of the outer pulley is given, the radius of the inner pulley is given. And what we are asked is that, that a spring B is unstretched when theta equal to 0, which means that when A is vertically up here, this spring A is unstretched. Any subsequent motion, if you go in this direction, what will happen? The spring will get compressed. If you turn clockwise, spring will have an extension and what we are asked to find out that what are the positions of equilibrium and do we know that if those positions are stable or unstable positions of equilibrium is the question. So, let us write down what is the potential energy. The idea is that, that the potential energy now has two components. One is the potential energy of the spring, other is the potential energy of this mass coming from gravity. So, it is Ve is for spring elastic, Vg is for gravity for this top mass. And what we want to know is equilibrium will come when dv by d theta equal to 0, that will give us some values of theta where the system is in equilibrium. And then what we want to do is that for those values of theta, what is the value of d2v by d theta square? Is it greater than 0 or is it less than 0? Okay? So, let us down what is the overall potential energy. Now, let us say that a spring gets extended by distance s. So, the so, the potential energy of the spring will be half k s square okay? and potential energy of g will be m g y. Okay? How do you decide this y? Let us take the point O, okay? let us take this point, uh, this point as the datum or the reference point and we will measure our potential energy with respect to this base point. Now, note one thing that if you rotate this by an amount delta theta, by, by an amount theta, what will be extension of this spring? just b times theta, b is the inner radius. So, b times this theta 
will be simply the extension of this spring. Is B or A? Sorry, A, A. A times theta, A is the inner radius, will be the extension of this spring. With respect to this datum, what is the height of this point? It is nothing but B cos theta. So what we know is that at a total potential energy is half K A theta square A is the inner point plus mg which is the weight times b cos theta. What is b cos theta is nothing but the height of this point A from this center point O. You agree with me so far? Yes? No, no, it says change of the height with respect to what? With respect to a datum? We take the center O as the reference point. What, what? Sorry, can you repeat? Theta equals to 0, huh. so the mass will be there. Yeah, so, but that's what I have been yeah. telling like so last half an hour ago I told that to one person there. Yeah. You can do that also. Let us take top point as the reference level. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Then what is the potential energy with respect to that reference level? How much does the mass come down by? Yeah, the, that. Uh, Mg B 1 minus cos theta. Yeah. Okay. But now the particle has come down. What is the direction of gravity? Down. down. If you go from top little bit down, what is the work done? Positive? What is the potential energy? Minus? Yeah. So potential energy will be minus mg times b 1 minus cos theta. Yeah. If you expand it, what will you get? Plus mg b cos theta minus mg b. That minus mg b is just a constant, which is coming because you are putting your datum at a distance b which is higher. Just try it. Yeah. So it just depends what is your reference level. You can take your reference level at the top, write everything accordingly, the answer you will get will exactly be the same up to some constant which does not depend on theta. Now instead what do I do for convenience, let me take point O as my reference level. With respect to that reference level, if I take this mass up by distance of B cos theta, how much is the work done? Minus MgB cos theta, what is the potential energy? Plus MgB cos theta. Just try it, think about it, try it, okay, you will be convinced. If you just write down a few equations, okay, you will be convinced immediately. Any question? It is just a matter of choosing an appropriate reference point or a datum point. There is no absolute value of potential energy ever. It just depends on what is the base level that you are choosing. Any, any question, other question? Now. So if there are no question, is, is everybody on board with respect to this equation? Okay, that is the potential energy. Now it's a one degree of freedom system, only variable is theta. Minimum potential energy theorem tells us that dV by d theta is equal to zero for the system to be in equilibrium. So what will you get? dV by d theta is equal to k square minus mgb sin theta. So we have to solve an equation of this form that sin theta is equal to k square by mgb times theta, substitute all the values the equation that you have to solve is equal to sin theta is equal to 0.8699 theta. Just put in all the numbers. Now note one thing, one solution to this equation is theta equal to 0. If you put theta equal to 0, this equation is satisfied. Does that make sense? Theta equal to 0 means point A exactly at the top. According to Newton's law, what does that mean? When this point is exactly at the top, the spring was unstretched. So there is no torque acting on this point. Is there any torque by gravity provided by, uh, is gravity providing any torque with respect to this point? No. So system is in equilibrium, we are fine. But now the second point will come from solving this non-linear equation. You can solve this graphically, you can solve by a newton raphson method or simple fixed point iteration, whatever way. If you solve this, you will get that theta is equal to 0 0.902 radians or 51.7 degrees. Okay. So theta is some value here. Now does that make sense? If theta becomes larger, what is happening? This spring gets extended. If the spring gets extended, it, it will exert a tensile force. What torque it will exert about point B? Anti-clockwise torque. What is the torque exerted by gravity? Okay, when you take moment about this point, clockwise. So those two clockwise, anti-clockwise torque will now balance in the moment equilibrium language. And you will see that even if you do it that way, you will see that the equation you will get is exactly the same and the particular value of theta you will get will be this. Okay. Now the question is that even without doing a single calculation, what do you think theta is equal to zero position? Is it an equilibrium position or do you think it is not an equilibrium position? Theta equal to zero. It is unstable equilibrium because we just saw that you tiny perturbation, okay, you will immediately see that the restoring torque will not be enough to bring it back to its original position 
and so the system will be in unstable equilibrium and if you do energy arguments you will see that d 2 v by d theta square is simply k s square minus m g b cos theta. Okay? Now if you put all the numbers, okay, whatever numbers we have at theta is equal to 0, if you put all the numbers you will see that d 2 v by d theta square is equal to minus 3.83 which means that equilibrium is unstable. But note one thing that without doing the calculation you cannot say that a system is an unstable equilibrium. Look at this equation. If you put theta equal to 0, then the value of d 2 v by d theta square will be equal to k s square minus m g b. So if k is very large, then you will see that even theta equal to 0 position is actually an equilibrium position. Any question, any point? Yes? Yes, please. Yes. Back slide. Okay. In a theta. A theta. Yes. We take a theta when theta is very no, no, no. small value. Now here theta we are getting 51.5. No, 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 no. That is not true because what will happen is that that because everything is connected to each other. Hmm. Like Can't it, we it take is like circumference. So it is a circumference because no. in an in, listen to me in an infinite symbol. So you give it a tiny rotation. Hmm. What you will see is that b times delta theta is the extension of the spring. Hmm. Now at that position give another tiny rotation. Further extra is what b times a times delta theta more tiny rotation a times delta theta so if you keep summing that up that's a dinner. Okay. all are so approximate you, method no 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 it's all, they are not approximate it's exact okay it's exact for example there is no other way otherwise how will that spring length be conserved you can take the circumference of the small pulley for to find the s to find the yes. but circumference of the pulley unless and until you are rotating that that circumference is of no use only when you rotate that pulley complete pulley only after rotation is that string this part of the this particular spring mm -hmm. it is getting sucked into that pulley yeah. it is just saying that for example if you are like flying a kite you rotate that thing how much ever you rotate by omega times the r of that is equal to how much length that came in so it is simple conservation of length that whatever length like for example if you file flying a kite okay you are like the spindle you are turning it in if you turn it by theta the radius of the spindle times theta is the amount of string that come in so it is simply the conservation of length that is at play here. And one thing that we are assuming is that, that the length, okay, the individual length of that, that free portion, that B times whatever is not changing is what we are assuming, that it is not stretchable. If that were stretchable, then that what you are saying is fine, that the amount of length that goes in we need not be exactly equal to whatever stretching is, stretch is happening here. But if you say there is a conservation of length, okay, that there is no stretch of that top portion, then there is no other choice. However much you turn the spindle by, that much length will be sucked in. And when that much length is sucked in, that point, this point here, okay, this point there, okay, that will keep getting pulled up by that much distance. And that is the extension in the spring. Okay, we don't have choice about that at all. And even calculus wise, it will work to be the same way. You just add infinitesimal rotations. Infinitesimal it is true, you keep adding the rotations, you will see that everything adds up. Any other question? Yes? Yeah, fine, let us move on. So again, I just want to emphasize that there is no limit on what the value of theta is for this assumption. This is a perfect assumption. Uh, this is not an assumption, this is a perfect quantity here. Only assumption is that at this particular portion is non-stretchable. That is the assumption we have. Okay, that this is non -stretchable. Because if you say that if I use this portion, the portion which is getting pulled in here, if that is also stretchable, then you don't know because then some small portion may get stretched in, but that's an additional degree of freedom that you are introducing in this problem. Okay, do I move on? Yes? Okay. Now, this is only because of these numbers. What we see is that at theta equal to 0, this d2v by d theta square is now negative. So, there is uh, no restoring torque for a tiny perturbation about theta equal to 0, and this assembly we say is unstable. If d2v by d theta square becomes positive, then this is greater than 0, this entire assembly is in stable equilibrium at theta equal to 51.7. So what we have to do is this second derivative, we have to put in value of theta, put in value of 51.7, okay, and then you have to check what is happening. But note here that this a theta, this theta is in radians, this cannot be in degrees. The moment we say that s equal to a theta, then the implicitly we are using theta in radians. 
ओके यस प्लीज आफ्टर स्ट्रेचिंग इफ यू लीव दिस फोर्स व्हाट विल हैपन टू द व्हाट विल बी द पोजीशन ऑफ द मास इफ इफ आफ्टर स्ट्रेचिंग व्हाट आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड स्ट्रेचिंग इफ आई जस्ट लूज इट लूज इट मींस देयर विल बी स्ट्रेचिंग कंडीशन इट इज what will be the position my point is what will be the position it is theta as because there is a stretching condition there is a force stretching now, condition on the bottom spring right yeah yeah Haan. now if i lose this what will be the position of the mass so where are you losing the mass suppose do you have some theta yes already yes is it in equilibrium are you keeping the theta at 0 or 51.7 where i what is your theta to begin with yeah, uh, say about 51.7 okay if you have theta equal to 51.7 now i'm losing it now if you just lose it Hmm. system will be in that position only but if you perturb it if you perturb it up then it will go to its original position yes then. if you perturb it down it will go even further but then to really know where it will go to yes. what you have to do is you have to assume that theta can be even larger okay but what will happen is that most likely is when you go uh, 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 when you drop that perturbation uh, so you are saying is that that if i perturb it about 51.7 degree what will happen where will it go okay where will it go it will return it will return there sir it should return, return there it will not return it's an unstable equilibrium it's a stable equilibrium it is it is returning there sorry 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 it's a stable equilibrium so a tiny perturbation you will get back to 51.7 okay but about zero if you perturb it about zero it will go to that equilibrium position is does that answer your question But if you do it on the opposite side, it will go in the opposite. In the opposite side, side you will go to the opposite side because the torque there is even right. more. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are just assuming theta to be greater than zero. Strictly speaking, we should also look at theta, which are negative. You have any other question? You have any further question? Okay. Fine. We. One thing I want to clarify here is that that we have not taken theta to be negative here. Okay. Strictly speaking, we should also take theta equal to negative and then see. that are there any other solutions in negative theta side also any question but my task to you is this okay if you go back now you can do one simple thing you have the function energy v as a function of theta why don't you just plot that energy for these parameters for a range of theta and then see what happens you will see that this point will be a maxima this will be a minima and just check that if they are graphically do you see any other maxima or minima okay just check any question let us move on so what we have in this problem okay very simple problem is that the spring is unstretched when theta is equal to 30 degrees at any position of the pendulum the spring remains horizontal why does the spring remain horizontal because it is connected to a roller whatever you do if the if the spring gets uh, tilted the roller will move up and keep the spring always in horizontal position now what we are asked is that, that if the spring constant k is equal to 50 newton per meter at what position will the system be in equilibrium so when theta is equal to 0 this spring is unstretched and we want to know that at what position will the system be in equilibrium straight forward how do we write down the potential energy of the system if you take the top point as a datum for this mass what will be the potential energy due to gravity this is 5 plus 5 10 10 cos theta into into 100 and minus because why with respect to this okay the potential energy is negative so minus 100 into 10 cos theta what will be the potential energy stored in this k as a function of theta okay so 5 sin theta minus 5 sin 30 square into half okay so this is 5 so what is this phi sin theta is this length but the original unstretched length was how much phi times sin 30 so the total extension is phi sin theta minus phi sin 30 half into k square that's done now only thing you have to plot is you have to uh, you have to find out what is the minima you will see that dv by dt theta looks like this stability is not asked but you can still do if you wish to okay Okay, it's perfectly fine. You can solve this. Uh, you can solve this equation exactly. Can you tell me what does the final equation look like? Thousand sine theta plus fifty sine theta. Okay, fifty into five, two fifty cos theta sine theta. So okay, so most likely those, this equation won't be solvable by simple methods. Okay, you will have to solve a non-linear equation for that. 
And if you solve this, okay, by Newton Gerson method or any other method, you will see that the solution will come out to be 15.8 degrees. And at 15.8 degrees, you can find out the second derivative. It's a very, very simple problem. d to v by d theta square. Plug in theta equal to 15 degrees. And you will see that the value of d to v by d theta square is 2196 is greater than 0. So the equilibrium position will be theta approximately equal to 15 degrees. And at that position, the system will be in stable equilibrium. Okay, really straightforward. It's nothing, nothing about this. Any question? Sir, considering the first year course, we cannot go like energy method in details or linear or non-linear analysis. Can we assume theta is small and we will go for simple calculations? What considering the first year course, sir, first year. So what we'll do is this, okay. Yes, I, will, uh, I will take your offer on uh, making theta small and I'm going to take that offer now. Okay, so let us do this problem on Thank that offer. Thank you, sir. Okay, only thing is that if you take theta equal to small, there is one small issue about uh, just doing expansion about small theta. Because for stability analysis, your potential energy should at least be quadratic in theta. Because if your potential energy is only linear in theta, your second derivative will be zero. So we have to take some amount of expansion, okay? We cannot just take what we did for virtual world. You will see that, for example, if you make delta theta to be very small and use what we did in virtual work, no question of stability arises. So your potential energy should be quadratic in theta and so long as we satisfy that and we will see a few, few questions where we can do that expansion, okay? Then the problem can be drastically simplified. I totally agree with you that we need to do the small theta approximation, but about what point and up to what order? So let us work on that, okay? I like your offer, okay, and we will do it. So, the question we are asked now, this is a very important question for the simple reason that if any of you would be teaching solid mechanics, for example, later on, or if the students take solid mechanics, okay, in the in their second year, then for example, one of the problems they encounter will be buckling of systems. And this is a very simple model to emphasize that what is the buckling instability and why and how it can happen. So what we have here is we have a combination of two rods. This is one rod AC, second rod CD, okay? This rod AC is guided by a roller, okay? Within these two set of guides. At point C, we have a pin connection. Now what we are doing here is that, that this spring C, okay, there's a horizontal spring that is connected to point C and connected at another rigid support. All the dimensions are given to us. Now what we are asked to do in this problem is determine the range of values of P for which equilibrium of the system is stable in the position shown, is what we are asked, okay? So even without going to the next slide, can you tell me is it a one degree of freedom problem, two degree or undetermined degree of freedom problem? How many degree of freedom does the system have? One degree? If I can know what is the angle which this makes, I automatically know everything which I need to know, okay? Now, what are the contributions that are coming to the potential energy? What will contribute to the overall potential energy of the system in this problem? Spring, spring force will clearly contribute, that is V of E. What else? Energy of load. Energy of load will also come into picture, okay? So now, suppose your system is now deformed in this conformation, okay? That this is theta, this is phi. Theta and phi are not independent. There will be a relation between them. So, what will be the total potential energy of this system? If this is theta, what is the extension of the spring? Now we are going to make use of small theta approximation here because what we are asked in this question is we are asked to find out that verify that this position is an equilibrium position and then determine the range of values for P for which the system is in equilibrium, okay? So this is our base position, theta equal to zero and phi equal to zero. Now you tell me, if some theta is given, what is the extension of the spring? A sin theta, okay? A sin theta is the extension in the spring. So K by two, okay? A sin theta square, in minus, uh, it doesn't matter. A sin theta square will be the potential energy of the spring. What is the potential energy of this mass? Now that's a critical question. How do you define the potential energy of the force that is being applied at the top? If we do with respect to bottom, what does that mean? What it means is that, that from the bottom, forget about the entire system. If I take a particle and take that particle against this force from top to bottom, 
how much work is done? Work done will be height minus of height into P. Because force is downwards, work, you are applying an upward displacement, so the work done will be minus P into height. So the potential energy will be how much? Plus P into the height. Now what is the height? Clearly it is A cos theta plus 3A cos phi. Okay? So P A cos theta okay, plus 3 cos phi. Now what is the, that theta by 2 it comes, we will decide that later. Now you tell me what is the relation between phi and theta? Strictly speaking, the relation should be that if theta is and phi is are large, then 2a sin phi should be equal to a sin theta, truly speaking. But as uh, the professor pointed out that okay, all are th small theta approximations, so why don't we use a simple approximation that theta is small because we want to look at the stability about theta and phi equal to 0 position. So we approximate sin theta as theta, sin phi as phi, so what do we know? We know that 2 phi is equal to 2 theta, so phi is equal to theta by 2 is what we have used there. So now what do we have? We have our potential energy written purely in terms of theta, theta is small. Okay? Further, uh, so let us do this now, furthermore, okay, uh, let me finish this then I will get to another point. Now how do we decide okay, that what is the equilibrium position? If we do dv by d theta, you will see that dv by d theta comes out to be this, put in theta is equal to 0 here. You will see that dv by theta equal to 0 is true when theta is equal to 0, which means that theta equal to 0 indeed is an equilibrium position. Now what we want to find out is, is the system stable or not? What we do? We do dv to v by d theta square, we will get another expression, put theta equal to 0. What we will see is that, that at theta equal to 0, d to v by d theta square will be equal to k square minus pa 1 plus 3 by 4. Just solve this, what you will know is that p should be less than 4 by 7 k for this entire assembly to be in stable equilibrium. And this is a precursor to buckling that if we apply huge amount of load, you will see that the system buckles, that theta equal to 0 is not a stable position, it will go into uh, another position okay, because of buckling. Another thing we know is that if k or stiffness is large, then the system is stable. If stiffness is small, the, uh, the, the system is not stable. This is again same thing that happens in buckling. The rod is stiff, no buckling even for large load. If the, load is, uh, if the rod is weak or not in stiff enough, then even for small load, it can go into buckling mode. So it is a precursor to buckling problem. Now coming back to the question of small displacements, we can also do another approximation. What we can do is if we want to avoid all this theta uh, cos and sine, just replace sine theta with theta. Because what we want is our overall potential energy should be at least quadratic. Because we want to take stability. So the potential energy should be at least quadratic. So if you replace sine theta by theta, this will just become a theta square and you will see that the answer does not change whatever we do. Similarly, there is this cos theta. So what is, this, uh, the, what is the easiest resolution to cos theta? 1 minus theta square by 2. Okay, you can do that also. You can replace cos theta by 1 minus theta square by 2 and you are good. You can then completely do away with sin and cos. But only thing is that your potential energy should be at least quadratic, which in this case it will be if you replace sin theta with theta and cos with theta to be equal to 1 minus theta square by 2. Okay, and then you are good to go. You don't need to use cos and sin, everything will be simple after that. Because we are looking only at the stability, this is good. But if you want to find out the second position of equilibrium, which is at finite theta, then this approach will not work. But if you are interested only in knowing if theta is equal to 0 is stable or not, this is perfect. Much easier and much uh, simpler to do and we will solve a few problems uh, uh, after the tea break where we will actually not go into this complete sine and cos theta but use this simple approximation.